In our last video, we detailed the rise of the Lord Ruler to power at the expense of the supposed Hero of Ages and the creation of the final empire. We also described the early stages of Kelsia's life, the man who would go on to make it his mission to bring down the final empire and the Lord Ruler himself. In the next few episodes, we'll talk about this struggle and its impact on the world of Scadriel and its inhabitants. You might be thinking you'd like to be known as Lord Ruler yourself. Well, you can get the first part of that name pretty easy thanks to the sponsor of this video, Established Titles. They sell small plots of land in Scotland, which are sought after because of a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. But to protect these lands, a tree is planted with every order, and established titles support charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, so it's a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. You'll get at least one square foot of land in Scotland with a unique plot number and a certificate to prove it. This allows you to officially get Lord or Lady on your credit cards, plane tickets and more. You can also get maps to show your new estate, including the immensely detailed hand-drawn 1611 map by John Speed, held by the National Library of Scotland. It makes a great last-minute gift, and they even have couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. The first 200 plots bought via our link will all be put together within a few minutes of each other next to the Wizards and Warriors plot, so act fast to join our little union of forest territories. Check out their Black Friday sale for discounts. Plus, if you use our code WIZARDS, you'll get an extra 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash WIZARDS to get yourself a title or give it as a gift and help support the channel. Kelsia emerged from the pits of Hathsin a different man. He maintained his easy smile and cheery demeanour, yet the scars he now bore upon his arms marked him out as the survivor of Hathsin a figure who would inspire hope and fear in equal measure among those he would come across. Snapping had also revealed Kelsier to be a mistborn, a man capable of making use of all the metals and their respective alloys, compared to a misting who could only use a single such metal. The fellow mistborn Gemmel, who was less than sane, agreed to train Kelsier. The two men began their journey north to infiltrate Keep Shesler in Mantis, where Antilius Schesler was conducting experiments on the Scar. During their trip, Gemmel trained Kelsier by explaining his powers and randomly attacking his pupil. Kelsier was an adept student and quickly became more proficient with his gifts. The training primarily focused on pushing steel and pulling iron. Gemmel also taught Kelsier to think like an allomancer, showing him how to burn all eight basic metals simultaneously. When they reached the keep, Gemmel went first to gain a better view, and made his way to the rooftop for a better vantage point, killing several guards. Here they observed a stairway leading downwards. Kelsier headed down first, hoping to enter the keep stealthily. However, his master ignored this sentiment and killed two guards. In the next room they discovered half a dozen Scar who had been bound, and Kelsier began to tend to them. This was interrupted by Antilius Schesler who arrived after hearing the commotion caused by Gemmel. A fully-fledged Mistborn, he immediately attacked Kelsia using steel pushing on a coin. Gemmel saw this as a further training opportunity and decided not to intervene. Kelsia displayed his prodigious talent in the ensuing fight, besting a man with a far greater degree of training and killing Antilius. Kelsia quickly returned to unbinding the scar, while Gemmel read through a notebook belonging to the now deceased nobleman which had several theories and superstitions regarding an eleventh metal. After freeing the Scar, Kelsia took the book and the duo escaped the keep. In the intervening period, Kelsia found the eleventh metal, Melatium, believing it held the key to defeating the Lord Ruler. To his disappointment, its immediate uses were less than clear, leading him to return to his initial plan. Firstly, he took into his employ the Kandra Orisur, then he killed the noble lord Tevin Renault of the Farmos dominance, allowing his Kandra ally to impersonate him. Following this, he made his way to the headquarters of the Scar Rebellion, which his brother Marsh had once headed, and convinced the new leader, Yedin, to hire him to help bring down the Lord Ruler. Heading towards Luthadel, Kelsia stopped at a farm owned by Lord Themos Tresting to speak with the Scar who worked the fields. While he was there, 
Lord Tresting attempted to rape a Scar girl, and in response, Kelsia murdered the Lord, which forced the Scar there to join the rebellion. Arriving in Luthadel, Kelsia first met with his old partner, Doxon, Dox, who informed him of a young Alamancer girl Marsh had discovered, who he suspected to be a Mistborn. The two men went to see her firsthand, witnessing her calm down an obligator, the Lord Ruler's Steel Ministry bureaucrat. This confirmed that she was at least a soother, a misting capable of pushing brass to soothe. However, soon they realized that a Steel Inquisitor had also been present and discovered Vin's alamancy, and that Kelsius' crew was also observing. The Inquisitor and a group of soldiers planned on wiping out Kelsius' crew to nip any rebellion in the bud. Kelsia intervened, distracting the Inquisitor while Doxon handled the soldiers. Kelsia and Dox then offered Vin a chance to join their crew, and despite her suspicious nature, she reluctantly agreed to learn more about Alamancy. Vin was a half-scar mistborn, a product of a dalliance of a noble with his scar mistress, who was raised by her half-brother, Reen. The Lord Ruler prohibited the nobles from lying with the scar, as the resulting intercourse often led to the birth of the mistings. To save himself, the noble had Vin's mother and sister murdered and tried to find Vin. Vin, like Kelsia, was a misborn. However, she snapped during her difficult birth, making her highly attuned to her powers. Kelsia invited a team of the finest thieves in all of Luthadel to the crew's hideout. Here, he introduced them to Yedin, Vin and his crew, and revealed the broad outlines of a plan to bring down the final empire and kill the Lord Ruler. Breeze was the soother of the crew, in charge of manipulating people's emotions while burning brass. Ham was a thug whose strength was significantly enhanced when burning pewter. Clubs was a smoker who, when burning copper, formed an invisible copper cloud blocking the sense of seekers who burned bronze. This allowed other alamancers to practice without being detected, and made him immune to the emotional alamancy of soothing and rioting while burning. His nephew, Spook, was a tin eye, which granted him increased sensitivity in all five senses and the ability to see through the mists. Under Kelsia's guidance, the crew began to flesh out the initial plan, breaking each element down to make the insurmountable seem attainable. The plan eventually formulated. A force of some 20,000 trained Scar was to be trained in the arduous caverns. Simultaneously, the crew would sow discord and discontent between the noble houses to bring about a civil war. When the army was sufficiently trained, and the civil war caused the houses to become unstable enough, the forces of the rebellion would be sent to attack the pits of Hathsin to cut the flow of Atium. This potent metal allowed the misborn user to see an opponent's future attacks before they happened, and its distribution allowed the Lord Ruler to control the houses. After the pits were attacked, the garrison would be sent out from Luthadel. With the garrison out of the capital and the houses weakened sufficiently, the rest of the rebel army could take the city, with the crew receiving the Lord Ruler's Atium stash as a reward for their efforts. Roles were then doled out, with Breeze charged with recruiting soldiers, Doxon operating the crew's finances, clubs hiding their alamancy through his copper clouds, and a former soldier Ham training the new army. Orisur, impersonating Lord Renault, would then buy the required equipment. Marsh was to infiltrate the Steel Ministry, posing as an obligator, and Kelsia, the most powerful misborn among them, would orchestrate attacks on the noble houses to increase tensions between them. Finn's role was to pose as Renault's niece Follette among the nobles, to gain information critical to the cause. Kelsia also wished to kill the Lord Ruler with the Eleventh Metal, but remained uncertain how this could be accomplished. He considered this as naught but a voluntary bonus. Setting about his work with his trademark optimism, Kelsia first attacked the keep of the Noble Venture, one of the strongest houses, tasked with overseeing the Atium supply coming from the pits of Hathsin. In the process, he killed eight Haze Killers, soldiers specially trained to handle Mistborn, wearing no armor and carrying no metal preferring to make use of wood canes and staves, or obsidian blades, which their opponents could not manipulate. Kelsia stole a bag of Atium, and made it explicit that he was a Mistborn who had attacked House Venture, which was forbidden under an unspoken agreement between the Houses, and effectively set in motion the Civil War. Upon his return, Kelsia began training Vin in using steel and iron, 
explaining the basic eight metals to her and starting to win over the naturally distrustful orphan. He also introduced her to Sazed, a terrace keeper, one of the few remnants of what had been the terrace people before the Lord Ruler's ascension. The keepers were tasked with preserving knowledge in the hopes of spreading it when the Lord Ruler was toppled. Sazed's speciality was the preservation of the now-dead religions of Skadriel. The plan continued apace, with Kelsia taking on several responsibilities by attacking the Great Houses, attaining information from informants placed around Luthadel, while also spreading misinformation among the noble houses as an informant, all of which further fueled the civil war. The most important of his roles in the long term was his training of Vin, whose talents surpassed his own, which would eventually prove decisive. In the meantime, the rebellion continued to amass trained soldiers, approaching the numbers needed for the plan to succeed. Vin, posing as Valette Renault, continued to infiltrate the noble elite by attending balls hosted by the most prominent members of the Great Houses and growing in confidence and stature as an Alamancer due to Kelsia's training. However, the process was not smooth, as Vin recognized her father at the balls and met a certain Elend Venture, both of which created further distractions. Her curious nature also placed her in immense danger when she followed Kelsia on a raid upon Credic Shore, where she recovered Elendi's logbook before being gravely injured in the escape. She was saved when Sazed, proficient in Ferukami, intervened, momentarily beating back the Steel Inquisitors before returning with the wounded Vin to Club's hideout. Vin took three months to recover, during which the crew members spent time with her, showing how they used their powers as mistings. However, soon the crew learned that the Luthadel garrison was sent out to handle the Scar Rebellion's army. The overconfident Yedin, believing they now had enough soldiers to begin the offensive, had attacked Holstep garrison to gauge the strength of the men he now commanded. Vin and Kelsia set out on a desperate attempt to save the rebellion, but they arrived too late. Having defeated the Holstep garrison in a night raid, Yedin had begun marching his men back to the Argois caverns, when they were attacked on the road by the professionally trained and armoured Valtro garrison of 5,000 men. Kelsia had to be convinced not to join the fray, as it was already an apparent defeat. Upon checking the caverns, the Mistborns discovered some 2,000 men. Led by Captain Demo, they had ignored Yedin's orders and stayed in the caverns. Vin and Kelsia led them back to Luthadel, where they were to disperse among the other Scar until again called upon. Following this setback, the crew committed even further to provoking an all-out war between the houses as an alternative to their earlier plan. As the tensions increased, the balls and parties ended, an all-out war was effectively declared between the houses, and alliances were drawn up. The plan seemed to work, until Kelsier and Vin went to meet Marsh, who had continued infiltrating the Steel Ministry as the plan progressed. Arriving at the meeting place, they found human remains that Kelsia believed to be his brothers. Furious, he returned to the pits of Hathsin, and, using his alimantic power, destroyed all of the Atium, ending its production and freeing the enslaved Scar. This prompted a bloody response from the Lord Ruler. He ordered many Scar to be publicly executed, which would forever alter the rebellion. Unwilling to stand idle, Kelsia intervened, attempting to save the rebels. Before the rebels were brought to execution, he confronted and killed a steel inquisitor by beheading him with his obsidian axe, proving they were not immortal. However, the day was not won, as the Lord Ruler emerged. Kelsia was too brave for his own good, so instead of fleeing, he faced the Lord Ruler, whose backhand sent him to the ground. His last words before the Lord Ruler killed him by impaling him with a spear were, But you can't kill me, Lord Tyrant. I represent that one thing you've never been able to kill, no matter how hard you try. I am hope." In a letter that Vin later discovered, Kelsia revealed that he had planned to defeat the Lord Ruler using the Eleventh Metal, however he did not know how to use it in combat, which ultimately led to his demise. Orisur then took Kelsia's bones and began impersonating Kelsia all across the city, making the Scar believe that he was a divine figure who could not be killed. They quickly began to worship Kelsia as a god, and taking inspiration from their deity, rebelled against the Lord Ruler's tyranny across Luthadel, aided by his crew members. In the meantime, Vin made her way to confront the Lord Ruler with the eleventh metal in her possession, 
hoping it would help her achieve victory. However, she was quickly captured by the Inquisition and imprisoned within Credic Shore to be tortured. Fortunately for her, she was rescued by Sazed, who utilized his Farukami, allowing her to escape and recover her possessions. Making their way to confront the Lord Ruler, they found Credic Shore to be eerily quiet. At this point, they discovered that Marsh was still alive, with two hemorrhagic spikes protruding from his eye sockets, indicating that he had been made a fully-fledged Inquisitor. Having joined their ranks, Marsh soon learned the core weakness of these seemingly invincible beings. Should the linchpin spike between their shoulder blades be removed, they would die instantly. Taking advantage of this weakness, Marsh had decimated the ranks of the Canton of Inquisition residing within Credic Shore overnight, freeing up the way for Vin to confront the Lord Ruler. The pair met the Lord Ruler in his chambers, and a fight ensued. Vin was brutally outmatched, like Kelsia before her. Reshek combined his powers as a Farukamist and Alamancer, which made him immensely powerful, bordering on the indestructible at this point. As the Lord Ruler was about to kill Vin, she tried to use the eleventh metal, Melatium, an alloy of Atium and Gold. It allowed Vin to see into the past, and she realized that the braces on Reshek's arms were the key. However, she had already used up all of her metals, and death seemed imminent for the young Mistborn. At this point, a huge steel push from the Lord Ruler tore Vin's earring from her ear. It turned out that this had been a hemorrhagic spike that had held Vin back from her true strength. Without knowing how she was doing it, Vin drew strength from the mists and tore the braces from the Lord Ruler's arms. These braces were made of Atium, and using his ferrochemical abilities, the Lord Ruler had utilized them to store his very life essence, making him effectively immortal. Once they were removed, he immediately felt the weight of a millennium's worth of time, aging rapidly. Using this weakness, Vin drove a spear through the supposed Hero of Ages, avenging Kelsia and ending the final empire. However, the final words of the greatest tyrant in Skadriel's history served as an ill portent of what was to come for its denizens. You don't know what I do for mankind. I was your god, even if you couldn't see it. By killing me, you have doomed yourselves. Thanks again to our sponsor, Established Titles. Buy a small plot of land in Scotland and become a lady or a lord, or give this title as an amazing and easy gift. In return, Established Titles plants a tree to protect the pristine forests of our planet. Take advantage of their Black Friday sale and use our discount code WIZARDS at establishedtitles.com slash wizards to get a further 10% off. In our next video, we will learn what the last words of Rashek meant. We're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.